want to sing to this love I bring to you is ours to share for everything that's wonderful is yours and mine. Oh, this is the end. You're cockeyed, pal. This is only the beginning. Come on, cheer up. And I'll prove to you that every cloud has a silver lining. Let's go back about a hundred years ago, when a lot of folks, including my grandpa and grandma, started west. You know, if they hadn't made that trip, the Admiral's path and mine might never have crossed. Then, in 1876, General Custer made a stand. My grandpa stood alongside him. Well, for a little while, anyway. And if the Indians hadn't won that battle, Grandma would have gone back east, and the Admiral and I would never have tangled. San Francisco, 1906. Yes, sir, it's an ill wind that blows nobody good. It took an earthquake and a fire to keep my mother and dad in California, so that someday I might get to meet the Admiral. Comes 1917, and our boys shove off for France. My dad went along with them fight the war to end all wars. Then comes victory, and they come back loaded with souvenirs and memories. Yes, sir, it was fate about the Admiral and I. Comes 1945, the big war is over, and the lady with the light says, welcome home to Uncle Sam's 10 million nephews. Welcome home to Stateside. Ten million homesick, happy G.I.s. My pals and I are among them. The shooting has stopped, but the shouting is still going on. We're home. Back to ration gas, synthetic rubber, and meat shortages. But it doesn't take long for the country to appear normal once more, from the East Coast to the West Coast. But it does take some of us servicemen a little longer to get readjusted. So, in recognition of this problem, our uncle organizes the 5220 Club which means that a veteran can draw 20 bucks a week for 52 weeks. Sort of a basic training for civilian life. Well, the four of us are making our weekly call, following our regular schedule, when into our lives comes trouble. Pardon me, little lady, but uh, you're in the wrong line. This line's for vets. Oh, are you a horse doctor? <laughs> Bum. Social security for unemployed comics is right over there. I was an ensign in the waves. Oh, well, well, brass, brass. Uh-uh. Sorry, Admiral. No smoking in here. Oh, you police the area, too. That's right, that's right. And uh, you're holding up the line. Next. Jane Madison. You won't be seeing me anymore. I'm leaving town. You worked in the past seven days? No. You refused employment? No. Able and available? Yes. Fine here. What? You're a duffel bag, Admiral. Or is it Mr. in the Navy? It's Miss. As in hit or miss. <laughs> now, Jimmy Stevens. Hi, Ethel. How are you? Well, I've been worried about you. Yeah, why? I was afraid you might have been trapped into getting a job. <laughs> we know. <laughs> is your company still intact? All present accounted for. Front and center men. Oop. Eddie Hoff. How's it going, Eddie? Swell, Ethel. I'll have a Benelli, and I ain't waking up. Yes, about I'm it. sure you haven't, Ollie. Michael O'Hallahan. Something tells me you're Irish. <laughs> well, have you worked in the past seven days? No. Nope. Nope. Have you refused employment? No. Nope. Able and available? We're trying, Ethel. Exhibit A, Eddie. Look at this classified ad. At liberty. Combat crew. Four specialists, eager and willing to drop bombs. Right, box 109, give references. Do you mean to say no one's answered that? Nope, haven't had a nibble in three months. I just can't understand it. So, uh, make with the checks, Ethel. Well, there's one question I have to ask you first. Yeah? Huh? Yeah, what's, what's this? Something new? Will all four of you marry me? Oh, <laughs> Ethel, you're a sense. Just name the day, baby. See you next week. Yeah, I'll see you, baby. Hey, don't forget those. Bye, Ethel. Bye. Hello? Ed? Ed? Uh-uh. Admiral, this time you're really on the wrong line. Why? Can't they cash checks? But they bleed you for 10 cents. Jimmy can save you that dime. 
I'm in a hurry. I have to make an important phone call. Which brings the cost of your phone call to 15 cents. 10 cents to get the nickel, and a nickel for the nickel to call. Of course, if you're so rich. Of course I'm not, but any place to charge you for service. Oh, no. Jimmy's got an angle. Yeah, that's fun, too. Oh, I suppose they pay you for the honor of cashing your check. That's right. A big round quarter for each check. This I want to see. Fall in. Come on. Ah, here we are. I want you to meet my bank, the charming fellow, came up the hard way, used a rope ladder. It's been a pleasure to serve you, Mrs. Fenevesi. Good morning. Oh, no, I knew I should have gone on sick leave today. I hope I'm not disturbing you, my good man. My name is Gene. Don't tell me I still have your own signature cards and you're opening four new accounts with $20 checks. Five new accounts. Five? What are you doing, recruiting? Now, if you'll just fill out your personal history for the First National's information. <laughs> and yours. And mine. Name, Gene Madison. Age, sex, female. Neither single, single. Engaged. Wow, a genuine diamond. And you was worrying about a dime. Well, I was, and he was. And besides, Henry's ring doesn't represent money to me. Henry, huh? Mm-hmm. We're going to be married. Uh-huh. It figures. Your checks, please, and we will avoid the usual bookkeeping. There we are, Admiral. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Where are the piggy banks that go with the new accounts? What's the First National trying to do? Yeah. Cheat us? Sure, we're going to sign, sir. That's better. Cool. Five of them. Oh, oh, excuse me. You wouldn't want this one. The paint is microscopically scratched. Oh, there's another one. That's better. And now you'll want to close your accounts, I presume. Nice presuming. Five twenties will do it. Do you mind if they wrinkle this time? No, no, not at all. Thank you, Admiral. <laughs> Thank you, and good morning. Come on. Wait a minute. Where's the 25 cent dividend? Oh, Jesus. patience, Admiral. Patience. Come on. Uh, but I still need a nickel for the phone call. Now, why spend a nickel for a phone call? I can get it for your wholesale. Oh. Hiya, Benny. How are you? Hey, Benny. What's up, you? Yeah. I've been waiting for you. I sold out last week's bags already yesterday. Look, nothing. Well, you're in business again. Five today. Five quarters, my benign friend. Five? Oh, is this what you call it, please? No, no, it's, uh, shall we say, an unusual day, Benny. And it's an unusual demand you've filled up for pigs with the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Nothing but banks they want all of a sudden. How do you do it? Oh, I just tell them if they work hard and save their money, they'll grow up and retire and live like us. Oh, what a philosophy this man lives by. Yeah, ain't he terrific? I must say you're ambitious. You think so? Uh, most men would accept their $20 a week and relax, but not you. <laughs> you go out and make another quarter. And one for you. Uh, I see. Still need a nickel for the phone. Uh-uh. You know, you'd like cigars with dollar bills if I'd let you. Benny, mm -hmm. um, Socrates once said, he is not only idle who does nothing, he is also idle who might be better employed. I ain't idle all day. I ain't idle. No, no, but your phone is. Do you realize, Benny, that somewhere someone is waiting for their phone to ring? They sit and wait and wait and nothing happens. Just silence. And there's your phone sitting there, idle. Never thought of it that way. Well, come on, let's spread some happiness around. Oh, but I wouldn't want to impose. No, on. go ahead, lady, please. We got to spread joy. But no long distance joy. Keep the joy local. Eh? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, do you mind? Oh, it's quite all right. Benny, Benny. She means she'd like some privacy. Come on. Oh. Hello. Is it Mr. Marlowe's secretary? Well, yes, it's me again. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Well, I had to check out of the Carton Hotel today, and I'll, I'll have to go back to Walla Walla unless I... Poor kid's broke. What? You say you've heard from Henry? Well, isn't that wonderful they've heard from Henry? Well, it's a small world. Oh, oh, excuse me. I was just talking to some crazy people who've been wonderful to me. Well, where did Henry... I mean, Mr. Marla said he wanted me to meet him. What? Oh, but there must be some mistake. But I, I 
I've been waiting here for him for two weeks. Didn't he even ask about me? Didn't he even mention my name? Oh, didn't he even say where he is? Stood up, huh? Yeah. Jimmy, there's no joy there. Maybe she got the wrong number. When he does get back, tell him I've gone to Walla Walla. Of course they have telephones in Walla Walla. <coughs> Hey, the doll's crying. Poor kid. It's kind of tough when you're in love and things go wrong. Gee, it does something to me when I see a girl cry. I'd like to get my hands on that dirty stinker just once. What kind of a guy would brush off a nice kid like that? Here she comes. Holly, get the limousine and pick us up. Roger. Excuse me. You boys have been very kind. Thanks a lot. Bye. Look, is it all right if I find this Henry character and muss him up just a little bit, huh? Oh, well, then you overheard. We couldn't help listening in. Well, that's all right. You mustn't think I'm upset. Just sure, we understand. Look, we'll drop you off at the airport, the depot, or, uh, or the camel barns, whichever way you get to Walla Walla. Well, it's the bus station, but my bus doesn't leave until 5 o'clock. Not till 5? Hey! She can spend the rest of the day with us. Watch us work. Sure. Why not? Work? Are you drawing money from the government because you're not working? Oh, we wouldn't work for money. No, that would not be legal. We're working out the payment on this. Come on. How about it? Well, they ain't really want me. Sure, sure we do. Sure, come on. Hey, here comes our limousine. Taxi? Taxi, mister? Allow me. That belongs to you? No, no, we just use it to get around to our appointments. Ready for the takeoff. Right, go, man. Up you go. Contact, Ollie. <laughs> That song for a long time. Ah, I guess you made him take a Lois. Lois? Yeah, the girl that he's in love with. Oh, he's in love too. Yeah, but she don't even know he's alive. You see what we Stop started. writing a book, Mike. Hey, Admiral, tell us about Henry. Where'd you meet him? Pearl Harbor. Army and Navy. U.S. Army. Oh, Henry's wonderful. He's, uh, he's charming and talented and ambitious. Overconfident. Let a girl like you run around loose. I'm not loose. He's busy in Paris putting a show together. Paris, eh? I got busy in Paris once. <laughs> this tomato okay, was Okay, Ollie, okay. Approaching the target. Get ready for the run, man. Here we go. Bombs away. Yes, sir, folks. However you like the music, you can't go wrong if you go to Rex Music Store, House of Happy Harmony. <laughs> Handsome radio photograph combinations, lightweight portable radios, and records to suit your every move. Go right to right, where the price is right, the records are right, and right is right. You'll be right if you go to right. Is that right? That's right. What a gift again. <laughs> How long do you four grown men have to do that for this silly little radio? A year. A whole year? Yeah, but that also includes a broken down piano on our den, don't forget. Oh, I'll try hard to remember. And more important, it provides us with five gallons of gas per day and wheels. Oh, I'm so glad that you boys don't have to depend upon a common streetcar. Oh, no, no, they cost money. Okay, Ollie, full throttle. Proceed to rendezvous. Roger. <laughs> Well, how do I get in? You apply to the board for membership. 
which I understand requires you to pass a blood test. If the results are favorable, you are then permitted to pay $5,000 to get in. Where can I invest five cents in a phone call? The public phone is over there. Thanks. I don't know what they're doing, Mr. Pettigrew. They won't let me in. Yes, sir, Mr. Pettigrew, the same ones I called you about this morning. You can depend on me, Mr. Pettigrew. Yes, sir. There has to be a catch to this somewhere. How can you afford it? We can't afford it. It's free. <laughs> I should have guessed. <laughs> yeah, you see, once a week, Mike relieves the lifeguard and we take over. Well, here's our lunch. Hey, Jimmy, what about lunch for the admiral? The secretary said you sold me to him for one cabana, four free admissions, four cold lunches, and four cokes, and that's all. Buy another box of lunch. Buy one? Are you trying to give Jimmy ulcers? I like your spirit, Admiral. You can share our lunch. I'll share yours. I'm not going to take the food out of Mike's mouth. He's the one that does the work. Well, it's not much work. As a matter of fact, I can't even swim. Can't swim? <laughs> I can't even float. <laughs> With water wings, he can float. But this isn't funny. All those people feel safe because they think you can save Shh! The secretary might hear you. Well, I hope he does before somebody starts drowning. Shh! Pipe down, Admiral. Now, nobody's drowning. And even if they were, we've got Ollie. I personally have seen Ollie pull five tired GIs out of the English chap. Then why isn't he the life? Oh, Admiral, Admiral, you just don't understand selling, my dear young girl. Now take a look at Mike. And then take a look at Ollie. What's that? It's coming from over there. Where's the telephone? Funny. Never run here before. Hey, maybe the secretary heard the admiral sound it off. Well, aren't you going to answer it? I guess so. Something tells me I'm making a mistake. Well, here goes. Hello? I made a mistake. The state employment service. How did they trace us here? Charles. Charles. Who? Peter Pettigrew, the jukebox king. Well, what does he want with a combat crew? Have you boys been putting slugs in his machine? Well, all right. Tell him we'll be right down there. Hey, it looks like they got us. What do we do? Now, I knew calm down, men. Calm down. Don't worry. I'll discourage them. Well, maybe they're good jobs. Well, what difference does that make? You mean you don't want any jobs at all? We can't afford to work. Mike, you better go with me. I may need protection. Any man who offers us a job can't be trusted. Jimmy, remember what your old pal Socrates said. He is not only idle... Yes, but don't forget he died saying... Now, uh, you fellas can see out of the bus, can't you? Yeah, sure, Jim. Well, kiss Walla Walla for me. Hey, that was good. Kiss Henry for me. <laughs> oh, how could such a nice fellow be so useless and irresponsible? <laughs> Operation X-2. Use them in a draw their fire. I'll hold them off as long as I can, but if I need your help, I'll give you the signal. And I'll come in full throttle. Roger. Yes? My name is James Stevens. Oh, yes. Go right in, won't Thank you? Thank you. You know, you look just like a detective. right. I presume you've heard of me. I'm Peter Pettigrew, the jukebox king. Shall I kneel? No, you may sit down. Oh, thank you. Have a cigar? Don't mind if I do. <coughs> you know, there's an ugly rumor circulating around that you're in need of some hired help. <laughs> it is not a rumor, Mr. <coughs> Stevens, and your assumed uncouth attitude does not upset me in the least. Thank you. <coughs> Where's the rest of your crew? I take care of them. You certainly do. I have a report on you. When a man of your capabilities does so much work to avoid work, he must have a good reason. A darn good reason. Such as? Well, <clears throat> you see, these three guys were with me when I... Well, 
Look, it's none of your business. Now, what do you want with a combat crew? I want you to prevent a young lady from leaving town, a girl named Jean Madison. The Admiral? And you need a combat crew to help you? Have you seen this little girl? She comes up to here on me. My detectives say to here. You see, I've had you trailed ever since this morning when you first got mixed up with her. We just got unmixed. She's leaving town. No, she isn't. You're going to keep her here. Pettigrew, you're too late. The Admiral, uh, Jean, uh, I mean Miss Madison, intends to marry a guy named Henry. Sorry. And I intend to see that she does, just as soon as my detectives deliver Henry Marlowe tomorrow. Look, I don't like this whole thing with detectives, and I don't want any part of a plot that might hurt that little kid, so count me out. And I have no alternative but to put you to work. Work? Work? Did you say work? I did. I have a spot in my organization where I could wedge in a combat crew if necessary. But the Constitution states clearly... Permit me to do the same. All you have to do to remain unemployed is to keep this young lady with you for 24 hours. But according to the GI Bill of Rights... That'll get you nowhere. According to my watch, you have 17 minutes and 30 seconds to take this young lady off the bus or go to work. He ain't kidding. Let's take off! <laughs> I'll go drive your bus. What is this? Do you realize you ruined my nylons? Well, there's something much more important than nylons. Nothing is more important than nylons. Money can't buy them. Besides, this is one of the last three kids I saved for Henry. Henry? Yes, that's it. What? Uh, Henry. Henry what? Well, uh, Henry's coming home tomorrow by, uh, by plane. How do you know? Well, it, it was a miracle. We happened by, by the purest accident to be in the lobby of, of the Carlton Hotel, and, uh, and you were paid, you know, uh, call for Phil, I mean, uh, uh, overseas call for Gene Madison, overseas call for Gene Madison. And you answered it? Sure, I thought maybe we could give you the message. Oh, how nice of Thank you. you. And, and it was Henry, and you talked to him. Yes, he was very upset. I told him what had happened, and he couldn't imagine what had become of his letters. Oh, you see, I told you it was a mistake. Sure. What did he say? What did he say? Well, he said, he said, uh, he said to tell you that he loved you and that he kept your picture in his heart every minute of every day and that he remembered the way your eyes sparkled and that, that wonderful little bubble when you laugh and, and your cute little turned up nose. And... No one but Henry would think of saying those things. No. Jimmy would. You and Henry certainly seemed to hit it off. You bet we did. And he made me promise to keep you right with us until he got here. Well, I couldn't do that. Well, you don't want me to go back on my promise to Henry, do you? You wouldn't have enough room. I'd crowd you. Well, I, I think we can manage to squeeze her in. Don't you think so, oh, fella? Sure, sure. Come on, Admiral. Come on. Admiral, come on. Admiral, come on. Admiral, come on. <laughs> Welcome to our cozy little cottage. Surely you don't live here. Uh-huh. They could build bombers in there. They did. Left brother, Ollie. Behold, Rex Haven. It's amazing. You've made quite a little home out of this defense line. We call this room the pirate's den. The way you boys operate, I'd say the name was appropriate. <laughs> Great. So lovely. Coffee table, what is it? Just a couple of turret blisters. And a love seat. Yeah, that was a two-man life raft. Yeah, get a load of that lamp. That's just a control wheel with a blister top. Sure, all this stuff's just salvage, war surplus, second hand. I can hardly believe my eyes. It's incredible. Not with a man of taste and ingenuity. Eddie here can take all the bows for this. Why, Eddie, you're wonderful. You can make real money as an interior decorator. Do you think so? Why, of course. All you have to do is go out and get yourself a job. Uh-uh. Stop trying to poison the minds of my men. He has talent, and I think it should be put to use. Uh, observe our unhappy faces before we learn the secret of successful living. Oh, well, it's mine. Yeah. Prior to his engagement with the Bronco Kid. You must have done a lot of fighting, Mike. Uh, fourteen fights, fourteen knockouts. What a wonderful record. <laughs> yeah, but I got tired of being knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is bad for the complexion. Pipe the character pushing the hat. Oh, hello, Ollie. Yeah, I used to operate in the Bronx. And you drove a taxi cab. Yeah, until Jimmy showed me how to live without working. Thank you, my boy. Mm -hmm. well, what do we have here? Well, that's Jimmy before the war when he had his own employment agency. Employment agency? Oh, no. 
Well, at least you approve of other people working. Yes, but that was before the war, Annette. Yeah. Well, I see we have our old friend Socrates with us, too. Yes. And as he once said... Yes, I know. I was there when he said it. Oh. Was she? Is Miss Eddie? Yeah, that's me. Why, oh, Eddie, what a lovely girl. Yes, she was. Was? I mean, she is lovely. Admiral, you've got a big night ahead of you. Wouldn't you like to freshen up? Well, if you have a powder room. Powder room? Powder room? Oh! Right this way. Here we go. Good heavens! <laughs> uh, may I make my choice? Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> funny, but... Back home, there are nine of us in the family. And, oh, really? And, oh, there's one baby. Oh, that's, that's tough. <laughs> well, don't forget, shine up real pretty because uh, we're dining at the Egyptian room tonight. Oh, the Egyptian room? Yes. Oh, right. oh, do we dress? Oh, of course. <laughs> well. well Oh, it's nothing, really. We come here all the time. We have an end with a head waiter. We call this joint the Egyptian room, because out there looks like the Sahara out there. Eddie painted the mural to fit, see? I told you he was talented. Chicken's good, huh? Well, uh, frankly, I seem to be getting all the tough pieces. Uh, this one looks better. Uh-huh. It's all tough. This chicken has been cooking four days. Four days? On a spit. A spit? In a rotisserie window. Now, the only thing is, this chicken's been on the fire for five days. Wait a minute. You mean this is five-day chicken? Yeah. But our contract with Pierre reads that he only cooked the chicken for four days. What happened? Yeah, well, he took off an extra 30 cents from our usual 50% discount. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Thank you, 30 cents. You know, this poor bird's been going around and round on a spit for five days without getting anywhere. <laughs> Reminds me of some charming young men I met recently. If you worked half as hard at doing something useful as you do at staying unemployed, well... You... Admiral, that's a very unoriginal thought, and it reminds me of a very obnoxious man I met somewhere recently. Oh, uh, Jimmy, where are we going to bunk the Admiral tonight? But I can't sleep here. Why not? It's just a barracks. Yeah, and you were away. We'll swing a hammock for you, Admiral. All the comforts of the Navy. You boys don't look anything like my former roommate. <laughs> but aren't you forgetting? Henry. Henry made me promise to keep you here. Oh, but he doesn't even know you. Well, that's true, but, um... Well, well, he trusted me the moment he heard the honest ring of my voice. I, I, I think it's the start of a great friendship between Henry and me. And uh, besides, uh, Henry was going to call you here tomorrow. You, you don't want to miss Henry's call, do you? Oh, no, but I... But don't worry, Admiral. I'll protect you. I'll even sleep in front of your door. Yeah, and I'll sleep in front of him. And I'll hit you with the chicken. I'd rather you threw a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody up? Well, certainly. What do you think you're doing? Just making my rounds. Well, they'll tell me you're a night watchman, too. Sure. How do you think we get a place like this rent, rent free? free. <laughs> That's right. Oh, don't you ever want to do anything worthwhile? Don't you have any ambition? Ambition? Oh, uh, you mean to rise in the world? 
Yes, of course. And, and be rich and famous. You could, you know. And have everybody admire me because I have a big office in a 20-story building. Wouldn't that be wonderful, a big office in a 20-story building? No. Have you ever looked down from up there? People look like mice. And if you go 10 stories higher, they look like ants. I want people who look like people. You don't take anything seriously, do you? Why are you afraid? What? She must have hurt you very much. What are you talking about? Oh, don't try to hide it from me. Only a woman could have made you so bitter. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't think anyone would ever guess my secret. I guessed. Well, you must have studied psychiatry in the waves, huh? No. No, it, it's just that a, a woman feels those kind of things. Oh. What's her name? Her name? Cynthia. Cynthia. Well, is it all over? Please, I, I'd rather not talk about it just now. Oh, I understand, but... Don't let it get you down. No. One of these days, the, the right girl will come along. Do you think so? Of course she will. Oh, oh I Say, that, that Henry's a lucky fella, isn't he? And if you want to be bright and shiny for him tomorrow, well, you just better get some shut-eye, that's all right. Well. Bon voyage, Admiral. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Pleasant dream. Thank you. Cynthia. What a silly name. <laughs> I tried that idea once. I came up with a dishwashing job, but Jimmy said... Jimmy said no. I know, that's it. Throw away all your principles and follow Jimmy. Whenever you get a useful idea, just throw it away and make Jimmy happy. Look, Admiral, today Henry will be flying home from Paris. You'll get married and live happily ever after on your philosophy. And we'll continue happily on our philosophy. And never the twain shall meet. Uh-huh. That's probably your half of the twain right now. Stevens Employment Agent. Mr. Pettigrew. What's wrong? Oh, no. Hold everything. I'll be right down. Mike, we got to go see a man about a job. A job? Oh. Yeah, if we don't see about it, we may have to take it, so come on. But I tell you, Stevens, it's not my fault. I had Henry in the palm of my hand ready for a 10 o'clock delivery, and now he's gone. Gone where? With well, Shirley, of course. Oh, 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 What'd you do? Oh, 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 oh. 
What's the matter with him? I don't know. He's having a fit, I guess. He looks like a new dance. Oh, it's my sack, Willie. I could always slip something when I think of Shirley. Oh, unravel him, Mike. He can pitch it. Come on, Mike's an expert. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Lie down here. Just relax. Watch it now. Just relax. There. How do you feel now? Takes my doctor an hour to do that. Now, forget about that. Now, who's this Shirley you're talking about? She's the most terrible, unscrupulous, fascinating woman I've ever met. I've had to divorce her twice. And each divorce settlement cost me a fortune. Now she's rich, and I... I need money desperately, urgently, to expand my business. Hey, you know what you ought to do? What? You ought to remarry her for your money. You're very clever, aren't you? That was my plan. She's my only liquid asset. Oh. Oh, you mean she's willing to remarry you? Of course. We have a horrible fascination for each other. She was coming back to marry me. It was all arranged. But then... she met Henry on the boat. Hey, this Henry character must be a Prince Charming on wheels, huh? Oh, he's a dope. How could he slough off a nice kid like the Admiral? But he isn't trying to slough her off. He doesn't even know she's in town. He loves her madly. I lose more nickels that way. Oh, my Shirley's so beautifully wicked. She's been bribing Henry's secretary, and Henry thinks that the girl you're holding has jilted him. She's pretty smart, but don't worry. We'll outfox her. No one has ever outfoxed Shirley. Ah, we're a cinch. All we got to do is bring the Admiral and Henry together, and our problems are over. But we can't find Henry. We can't find him. Shirley has smuggled him underground. I have 25 detectives working 24 hours a day trying to track them down without a single clue. No. You've got to hold her another day. Oh, no. She's a menace. She keeps on putting ideas about work in the minds of my men. Ah, she's a labor agitator. No dice. Come on, Mike. I'll have you on the slave market in the morning. Get me the State Employment Bureau. Why, you... Violence will get you nowhere. Give me that phone. Operator, change that number to uh, Hempstead 7, 4693. What are you going to do? I'm not going to whistle Dixie. Hello, Miss Madison. This is Air Francais speaking. How you say on English, the French Air Transport uh, Company. Excuse one moment, please, Miss Madison. You speak French? Yes, we'll speak. Hey, Mike, do an airplane. Did you? Excuse the interruption, Miss Madison. What we have for you is a message from Monsieur Malheur. Monsieur Malheur has missed the plane of today and will be on the plane of tomorrow. That is all. Hello. Ah, merci. Merci. Ah, come on, you lug. Vive la France! Vive la France! Well, holding a wake for anyone I know? She's going back to Walla Walla. Go, what? No. No, you can't do that to us. I mean to Henry. Has she heard from Henry? Well, of course she heard from Henry. He's in love with her. He thinks of every minute of the day. It's not his fault that he's been delayed. Wait a minute. How did you know he was delayed? Well, it's, it's, it's in your attitude. But what about my word, my bond, my promise to Henry? Oh, poor old Henry. How do you like that? She waits and waits around, and when she's sure he's coming, she's going. Isn't that like a woman? All right, I'm being difficult and hard to get. But Henry's got to understand that I need his respect, that I can't be left on corners. Left on corners? You say this after the full rounded life we've shown you? Oh, oh Jimmy, it has been fun and you've been very nice. Look, Admiral, I... if there's anything we haven't done that you'd like us to do, just name it. Well, I would like to take the 5 o'clock bus back to Walla Walla. Well, you can think of something tougher than that. Sure, ask for the moon. Jimmy will get it for you. Anything. Sure. You certainly do have confident followers. I wonder what they think if you fail. Oh, that's impossible with Jimmy, Admiral. Is it? Well, there's one more thing I'd like to do before I catch my bus. Anything. This may sound funny, but uh, I was in the Navy for two years. Yes. <laughs> And I never got offshore. Oh, one outboard motor coming up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, a big boat. Uh, a yacht. I want to take a ride on a seagoing yacht. Well, uh, I... I... I, I, I... You're a crystal ball, magician. Something for the soul. Hey, Jimmy. Hi, mates. Hi, Skipper. Oh, you'll find everything up for. Just make yourselves at home, mates. Boom. 
Well, how she strike you, Mr. Stevens? Well, it's a nice craft. It's a nice craft. Build a select timber, deluxe in every respect. Call it teak decks, wind screw, even the catfish. And I'll personally guarantee you that you'll turn up an honest 18 knots. I know, but 70,000 is a lot of money, even for me. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Stevens, that's less than $1,000 a foot. You know, when you break it down to feed, it really doesn't seem to be quite so much, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, friends seem to be enjoying it. Oh, yes, yes, they love the sea. Matter of fact, I'm buying it for them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Admiral, how do you like life on the briny deep? Wonderful. But how do you relax? <laughs> Just sit down. <laughs> See? I keep wondering when the sheriff comes in. Oh, Jimmy makes the sheriffs hide their badges. Mike. Yeah? Do you like me well enough to tell me the truth about something? Sure. Did you ever know Cynthia? <laughs> Who told you? Jimmy. He did? Gee, that's funny. Jimmy never talks about Cynthia no more. Was she beautiful? Well, I'll say she was. Cynthia really had style. What'd she look like? Well, she had a clean nose for one thing. Well, I should hope so. But you know, her props were a little large for her size. Well, that doesn't sound so beautiful. Oh, but you should have seen the load she could carry. Wow! Oh, is that good? Good? Do you like them to do that? Well, that depends on how much damage you want to do. <laughs> well, that's something I wouldn't know anything about. But you know something? She was just a little tail heavy. Oh, she was. Yeah. But you should have seen her be. Narrow and round. Oh, that Cynthia was really trim. <laughs> You seem to have known Cynthia fairly well. Well, I should. I listened to her sing over a thousand times. Oh, Cynthia sings. Oh, not anymore she does. Not since she dropped the four of us. The four of you? Sure. Coming back across the channel, her motor's conked out, and she dumped us in the drink. <laughs> Great joke. <laughs> Bad girl, that Cynthia, wasn't Ooh. she? I suppose you think it was funny to enlist my sympathy. I didn't enlist them. They volunteered. I want to go home with you, please. Getting a little rough for you? I have to catch the five o'clock bus to Walla Walla. Oh, now, come on. You've taken me on your last joyride, Mr. Stevens. Aye, aye, Admiral. The ship is at your command. Would you like to feel her out, Mr. Stevens? Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'd like to try her in a tight turn. Do you mind, Captain? Mr. Stevens is obviously a yachtsman. Thank you, sir. He can take it, sir. Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> to you. Oh, you're wrong. It means everything to us. You know, I, I got a funny feeling I'm going round and round. Maybe I'm on a merry-go-round. Well, uh, climb on down, Admiral, and put on your prettiest dress because tonight we got a special treat for you. Yeah, a legitimate stage show. Legitimate? Yeah, legitimate. What's the matter? Can't you steal the theater? Well, here 
Here we are. Just on time. Seems awfully late to me. Oh, these curtains are never propped, you know. Well, the least we could do is go in and sit down. But it ain't fashionable to be early. Get your programs, folks. There you are, Admiral. Swing time. Why, that's playing over there. That's right. Yeah, it was a very good show, too. Curtain, curtain going up. Ah, they're going in. Well, is he going with us? Nah, it's just nice to be watching. Come on, let's go. Yeah, smoke this. Well, I don't feel like... Well, smoke it, come on. No smoking in the lobby, please. No smoking. Oh, so sorry. Well, I, uh, I hope the second act is better than the first. Come oh, there. Just a minute. I didn't see the first act. <laughs> Sleeps through everything. Come on, dear. <laughs> Legitimate. This is humiliating. Shh, where's your sense of adventure? Box seats. We'll suppose they're taken. We're safe. Very few people can afford box seats. But I Shh, sit down and relax. No, no, no. It's a program. It is taken. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, good evening. Excuse me, does that say swing time? Oh, yes, it does. I'm in the wrong theater. <laughs> this is for you. It's poison. Thank you, friend. I hope he takes a drink of it. Oh, come on. Smile. Enjoy. Oh, Dance, yes. Right? <laughs> There's Henry. Where? He's not in Paris at all. He's with a girl. A gorgeous girl. Oh, maybe it's a guy with a head like Henry's looking from the top. Don't you think I know Henry's top when I see it? Oh, I couldn't recognize my own top from up here. No, I saw his face when he looked up at the balcony. It is Henry. So he's out of town, you see. Oh! Oh, wow, oh. I don't have time. Henry. Pardon me, please. Pardon me. Take over, fellas. Take her home. I'll look after this. <laughs> Second act starts with a bang, doesn't it? Uh, take him away now, Pettigrew. Sure, it's Henry. Gene said so. And besides, I saw the top of his head from the box, and it's the same one that's on the stretcher. Get those gumshoes of yours down to the hospital and hog tie Henry. We're holding the girl. Don't argue with me, Peter. You want that double entry love life of yours to collapse? Gee, what a rough deal for the Admiral. Yeah. She must be heartbroken. Yeah. Look, why don't we tell her the truth? Oh, no, that'll make her feel worse. I got it. We'll tell her I was the hospital and it ain't Henry at all. Sure. Anybody can have a top of a head. Yeah, yeah we'll tell her the top of the head she's seen belongs to Mayor Sheboygan. Why don't you tell her Henry flew back to Paris? No, I don't... Uh... Oh, Admiral! Good morning, Admiral. Would you like your hard-boiled eggs three minutes, Admiral? I have the water ready. No, thank you. How about some coffee? Yeah. All right. Maybe it'll help me wash down a few more of your lies. Oh, they weren't meant to be vicious lies, Admiral. We were just trying to ease... Ease what? The whole thing's very simple. Henry's just changed his mind, that's all. And for your information, I've changed mine. It's no. just as simple as that. No, wait. Don't you think you should hear Henry's side of it? I'll get you some orange juice. It's not his fault. He must figure you gave him the gate. Sure, he doesn't even know you're in town. Yeah, that Pettigrew Dave's been keeping him away from you. Who's she? Only the ex-wife of the guy that's going to put us to work. We don't keep you here. Pettigrew. It grows a jukebox key. So that's it. The only reason you've been nice to me is because you didn't want to go back to work. Oh, you... Oh. No, wait a minute, Admiral. Don't go. We like you. Honest, we do. Yeah, sure we do. And all the time I thought you were trying to help me. Well, you did. You helped me show me what a fool I've been, and I hope you're happy, very, very happy. Very, very happy. That's the spirit. Those are the words I like to hear. Admiral, I've got good news for you. I've just had a call from the hospital. I know. It wasn't Henry at all. No? No. It was the mayor of... Uh, Sheboygan? Sheboygan. Oh, well, uh, uh, who told you that? I received a mysterious phone call. Oh. Oh, you did? Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, what'd they say? Hello? This is Madison. Uh, you have just made a bad mistake. You almost killed your own man. 
Oh, you should have killed Jimmy Stevens, the cheap, lying, conniving faker! Ooh! Ooh! Hold that line, man. Admiral, listen, you're just nervous and upset. I'm not nervous. I'm not upset. In fact, I've never met any more calm in my life. Yes, but when Henry gets... Ah, oh, he'll find me in Walla Walla. Oh, where's my bag? No, no, Admiral, you can't leave now. Oh, yes, I can. And what's more, I will. No! Oh! Admiral, listen, please. Oh, shut up. I hope that Mr. Pettigrew gives you the... The graveyard shook in the salt mine. Uh, the poor kid. Well, who tipped it? As if I didn't know. Me and my big mouth. Yeah, you and your big mouth. Well, it's back to work for us. No, no, no. I'll think of something. I should never believe another thing we said. No, no, but you'll believe Henry. And the hospital says Henry's taking nourishment. Yeah, well, she's taking the bus. Well, we'll take the nourishment and Henry and put them both in the bus with her. Come on, let's go. Now remember, the first sign of an argument from Henry, and we will snatch the corpus delecta. Right. Does that mean we gotta kill him? Oh. He ain't even ambulatory, he's gonna be. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's hey. go. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. oh! Wait a minute. This isn't Henry. Any fool can see that. What happened to him? It's my sacroiliac. Shirley has done it again. Mike, straight them oh. out. I can't talk to a pretzel. Any decent woman would have waited until we were married again before carrying on like this. Oh, oh. Now, now, where's Henry? I wish I knew. Shirley smuggled him out of here. With all these people around here, that's impossible. My Shirley takes anything she wants. Look how she took me. Read this note she left. What kind of woman is your ex-wife? Completely unscrupulous. I can believe that. Well, she says here that Henry loves Jean, that he's mad about her. Gee, the Admiral would feel a lot better if she knew about that, huh? And she's gonna know about it. This note is all we need to convince her. Yeah, but she's on a bus already. En route. Wait a minute. Are you telling me you let that girl get away? I'll have you punching a time clock in the morning. No, no, not that. Come on. Wait a minute. Who knows the road to Walla Walla? Oh. I do. I was born in Walla Walla. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Attention, all bus drivers. Attention. Be on the lookout for one Jean Madison, age 22, single, female. She is a beautiful girl on the way to Walla Walla. When last seen, she was wearing a tan beret with buttons and a brown suit. She is known to favor the seat immediately behind the bus driver. She is wearing nylon stockings and she has beautiful blue eyes and wavy brown hair. Attention, all bus drivers, attention. As a means of positive identification, you will recognize her by a mole above her left knee. That is all. Watch the road. I don't want no trouble, lady. I think you're hot. Hot? Oh, I'm boiled. Hey, to stop. Calm down, calm down. Here, you see this? Don't say another word until you've read this. Oh, Here you are, the greatest news you've ever had in your life. I don't see how you boys keep out of jail. Stop talking and start reading. You're the most impossible, read. idiotic people that I have had. Now, aren't you ashamed for those thoughts you've had about Henry? Poor Henry. That's what I've been saying, poor old Henry. I owe you boys an apology. You weren't lying. No, of course not. no. You were thinking of my happiness. Certainly. Admiral, the pursuit of happiness is practically a profession with us. Yeah, that's a racket. Now, would you like to climb aboard a cloud? Thank you. There we go. Oh. What's the matter now? It's my last pair of nylons. They're ruined. And I want it so to look nice for Henry. If Henry's mind is on nylons when he sees you, then Henry's out of his mind. Go on. Switch on! Flaps up! Energize number one! Check metaphor, President! Energize number two! Ready for the takeoff? Check! Contact! Well, 
Hello, Eddie. Where have you been all evening? I'm glad you're up. Surprise. What on earth? Nylon. Six pair. Wonderful. Oh, Eddie, this kind of thing means so much to a woman. Thanks. They're not just from me. They're from all of us. Oh, where'd you get them at this hour? The black market has a swing shift now. Oh. <laughs> Kiss Jimmy, too. It was his watch that paid for them. I would if he were here. I really would. Well? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Jimmy, you shouldn't have done it. You're so wrong. I should have done it a long time ago. I'll finish your rounds for you. Huh? Give me your clock. I'll finish the rounds for you. Oh, never mind, Eddie. You don't have to. didn't hurt him very much. Oh, I don't think so. From what I've heard of Henry, he probably can take it. Oh, he can. He, he's very strong. And, uh, and, and uh, charming. Oh, yes. Yes, charming, exceptionally. And uh, he's tall, and uh, his shoulders are wide, and uh, he's tall, and uh, and he has hair, and... And teeth. Uh, and teeth, and, and, and he's very good-looking, and... Uh, uh, only sort of way, and... Uh, in fact, he's bit like you. Except <laughs> he likes to work. Oh, yes, he loves to work. He's, he's, he's very ambitious. <laughs> and, uh, and he's tall and... Uh, Except... Uh, oh, did I? Well, oh, Henry, uh, Henry, uh... Oh, Henry... <laughs> sure of it. For a girl of your qualities to be hanging around, waiting for a man is ridiculous. Is it, Jimmy? Yes, yes. Uh, you see, we have to remember that you're engaged to Henry. Oh, yes. And, well, it's, it's just that I... Oh, well, it, well, it isn't. Isn't it, Jimmy? No. No, Admiral, you better go home. I'll, I'll find Henry Foy and I'll gift wrap him. I'll send him to your airmail special delivery, but you better go home. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, we got trouble. What's the matter? What happened? Well, it's bad. It's Eddie. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Now, nothing could be that bad, fellas. We're all in this together, aren't we? Yeah. Well, whatever it is, good or bad, we multiply by four, don't we? Sure. Well, okay, come on, speak up. I've got a job. Oh, that's wonderful. Where is it this time? China, Burma, India? Kansas City. I'm so happy for you, Eddie. I'll bet you are. Have you told Lois? I've been sending sketches to this firm, and they've offered to take me on as a decorator. Kansas City, huh? Well, I suppose that's far enough away for someone who wants to run out. Jimmy, are you telling him not to take this job? Look, you keep at it. I will not. Eddie, don't pay any attention to him. You take the job. I'd need $100 for train fare and... $100, I... huh? Well, we don't have it. And even if we had it, you wouldn't get it. 
I don't understand this, this horrible obsession you have against work. Well, there are a lot of things you don't understand. And if you want to make speeches, you better go, go find somebody who's interested. Go find Henry. Don't think I won't. At least he has principles. He's not a chiseling gold brick. He's, he's a man you can depend upon. He, he... Oh, you're impossible. Here they are. Well, Mr. Stevens, I imagine you'll be very happy to... Is this the girl? That's her. Not much of her, is there? Rather attractive, though. All we'll have to do is wave her under Henry's nose. You're not going to wave me under anybody's nose. I'm going home. You can't do that. My detectives have found your Henry. They've discovered where Shirley is hiding him. Where? In my wedding present. In what? My country home. My own house. Take her, men. Take your hands off! No! Oh! What's the matter? Didn't you hear them? They snared your Henry for you. Charming, wonderful Henry. A man of principle and ambition. Henry's waiting to lift you right out of our hair. And this time, I'm going to see that he does. Paul is after the... At last. We want to surprise them. Surprise? Ooh. Peter, darling, I thought you'd never get here. Oh, Shirley, it's so good to see you. I've missed you terribly. I know you've missed me. You felt it? I know it. You see, I've had my detectives following your detectives. I told you she's never been out, Fox. Say, where's this Henry character? Yes, where is he? Uh, shall we go in? Yeah, let's go. Come on, Come on yeah, Henry's waiting. Mr. Bimble has some news for you. Bimble? Who's Bimble? Bimble! Oh, there you are. Why, well, you should know Mr. Bimble. He's one of your best detectives. Go on, Mr. Bimble. Tell him. Oh, you tell him. Oh, for heaven's sakes, tell me. Well, Henry ain't here no more. What? She sneaked him out from under our very noses. <laughs> now, wait a minute, lady. This may seem funny to you, but... Who's she? Oh, that's right. You haven't met. Well, step into the center of the ring. Admiral, meet your competition. So, you're Henry's wonderful little way from Walla Walla. Ah, that's hook. <laughs> yes. I understand you're known as Peter Pettigrew's folly. Oh, <laughs> right cross. <laughs> Very clever, darling. Very clever. That's fine, girls. Now break clean and uh, come out fighting. <laughs> Why don't you leave Henry alone? I read the letter and you admitted yourself he didn't love you. Oh, let's not be naive, darling. With all of Henry's charms, why should a little thing like love stand in the way? And besides... I've got your Henry hanging on the rope. On the rope? Uh -huh. Oh, he can't be very much good to you that way, can he? <laughs> now, just as well face it, darling, you're outclassed. Outclassed? Outclassed. Classed. <laughs> now, why don't you be a good little girl and go home? <laughs> I will be a good little girl. <laughs> but I'm not going home! Well, you're not going to hang around us and mess up our lives. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. You incompetent idiot, you're spoiling oh, wait everything. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We kept our part of the bargain with you. If you want the Admiral to stick around here waiting for Henry, why don't you keep her? You I never thought of that. Well, we have plenty of rooms here. Six servants, 22 detectives. But, but don't worry about me. I'll be staying downtown. What poetic justice. Well, it's okay, then. Yeah. Everything's settled. Thank you very much, and I promise you, you'll never forgive me. Come on, fellas. Where, where's Shirley? Where's Shirley? Shirley's gone. Smith, tail my wife. Don't let her out of your sight. She'll lead you to Henry. Now go. Wait a minute. I can't go. Why not? I'm not Smith. My name is Jones. All right, Jones. Watson Jones. My dear Watson, uh, don't look now, but Shirley's drifting down the driveway. Yeah. What? She'll never get away from me, Mr. Pettigrew. Oh, there she goes. Hmm? Uh, uh, relax, Mr. Pettigrew. I'll head her off. You can depend on me, Mr. Pettigrew. Oh, I've got a flat. Use my car. Hi. Hurry, hurry. Oh, no. Look, she's blasting me, too. Oh, that Shirley's the most exact. Oh, my sacrilege. Mike, Mike, help me. No, you don't. From now on, you keep him in here. Come on, fellas. But Jimmy, Jimmy. What's the matter now? My clothes are at your house. Well, they're too small for us. We'll send them to you. Come on. Oh, Relax, Mr. Pettigrew. Oh, oh, Be brave, Mr. Oh. Pettigrew. Eddie. Why, Jean, it's good to see you. I noticed you drew KP duty tonight. Yeah. Well, count me in. How are you, Admiral? How are things at the Pettigrew house? Oh, very elegant, you know. Meats and butler. And soft-boiled eggs? <laughs> Sounds swell. Oh, I don't know. I'm sort of spoiled after being with you fellas. You know, 
It doesn't seem fun anymore when people pay for things. Where are the boys? They went to the six-day bicycle races. Good heavens, they're going to be gone for six days? No, they only bought tickets for the opening night. Bought? You mean Jimmy paid to get in? Yeah, Jimmy's slipping. He isn't the same lately. I guess you know why, Admiral. Oh, I wouldn't say he's changed that much. I noticed he wouldn't let you take that job. Well, it, it wouldn't have been much good without Lois anyway. Well, that's easy. Take her with you. You you don't understand, Admiral. Well, she lives here in town, doesn't she? Yeah, in Bel Air. But I, I don't see Lois anymore. Not since... Oh, she met someone else while you were overseas. No, you see, I... I, I have to make the rounds now, Admiral. See you later. Well, Eddie... Was that Lois that broke it off? No, it wasn't Lois. Well, well, did you break it off? Don't be silly. Then it's Jimmy. It's this life he's making you leave. Of course you couldn't marry a girl into this. It wasn't Jimmy's fault. It's mine. He has nothing to do with it. Well, you're just protecting him. Look, Admiral, stop naming Jimmy, will you? If you're going to think that, I, I'd better straighten you out. You see, I got scared when I found out how rich Lois was. The night she let me take her home from the officer's dance. I never saw such a big house. When you're in love, money isn't really important. It wasn't Lois. It was her folks I was scared of. So I lied. Then when I shipped overseas, I put my lies into writing. I even began to believe them myself. I promised Lois the moon on a silver platter. And suddenly I realized I couldn't live up to my lies when I came home. I lied myself into a deep hole and I couldn't get out. So when our plane crashed, Lois was notified that I was killed in action. It was the answer to my prayers. But that poor girl thinks you're dead. It's better that way. Oh, Eddie. You adorable fool. Your troubles are over. I'm going to go out and find Lloyd and tell her the truth. No, you're not. You keep out of this. Jimmy's right. You're not happy unless you're meddling in other people's affairs. Mind your own business. Eddie, why don't you take the job? You'd make good at it. I, I haven't even got the $100. We'll get the $100. After all, $100 isn't so tough to raise, is it, Mike? You've got to win this money, Mike. You've got to for Eddie's sake. Ah, uh, for Eddie, I'll murder this problem. Here they are. Come on, Mike, get your clothes on. Wait a minute, you leave him alone. Hurry up, let's get out of here. He's earning his first honest dollar since he got mixed up with He him. doesn't need a dollar. But it's important. It isn't for Mike, it's for... It's for me, I need the money. Is it important enough to send him to the cemetery? Oh, don't be such an optimist. It's only a friendly boxing match. Yeah, well, a friendly tap in the head can kill him. Kill him? He's got an infranial fracture, a tin plate to you. Yeah, he got it in a plane crash. And I crashed the plane. Oh, Mike, why didn't you tell me? Please, Jimmy, I can take this. Come on, Mike, let her get her own money. Come on. Are you crazy? Okay, you can't. kid, you're on next. Well, I got news for you, bud. Mike ain't fighting tonight. Oh, no? Look, Jack, I don't know who you are, but I operate this joint, and I better explain my house policy. Now, I fix fights, full fights, do everything with fights, except cancel. Yeah, well, tonight you're changing your house policy. Mm-mm. And I got six characters on a pension waiting outside to see that nobody except a guy in trunks heading for the ring leaves this room in the next few minutes. Wait a minute, Mr. Boober. Mike, I got you into this and I'll get you out. Jimmy! Jimmy will fight in your place. But Jimmy don't know how to fight. I'm a lousy fighter. Well... Oh, they're worse. All right, then I'll fight in your place. Look, sister, drop around on Monday nights when I have lady wrestling. Tonight I need somebody with hair on his chest. Why don't you get Henry to fight for you? Don't think he wouldn't. He wouldn't mind fighting. He wouldn't be a coward. Oh, shut up. How much does the loser get? Nothing. Nothing. According to the State Boxing Commission, you've got to This joint's run strictly according to Marty Gruber, and the loser gets nothing. <laughs> you guys figured out. I got a hot crowd out there yelling for blood. And one of you better be in that ring in five minutes. Who's got the most blood? I want you to fight a nice, clean fight. I don't want no low blows. 
no thumb no. in the eye, no, no. healing, no rhinoplasty hey. function, and no kidney function. You both understand that? Shake hands and come on back. Come on, I don't like this. Come on, fight. It's not too late, Jimmy. We can still make a run. Mm, that Corporal Kelly's a killer. He's got muscles in his ears. Now, don't worry, fellas. I'm not going to fight this guy. I'm going to talk him into splitting the purse. Ten Black seconds. Jenny. Clear the ring. Clear the ring? No, no, not you. Oh. Stop the fight! Four, five, six, 
Thanks very much. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. That's him. Bleachers don't know it, but they just seen one of the gamest guys that ever walked into a ring. I'm so sorry, Jimmy. Oh, it's you. I'm terribly sorry. It's okay. Now go figure some other way to get your money, but count me out. Please, Jimmy, it wasn't for me. It was for Eddie. For Eddie? So he could take that job and I could tell Lois the truth. You could tell Lois. Well, what good would that do? It would solve Eddie's problem. Oh, what do you think I've been trying to do all these months? Why do you think I wouldn't let Eddie take a job a million miles away from here? Don't you think I could have told Lois? Then why didn't you? Oh, because it's not as simple as that. Eddie killed himself when he let Lois think he was dead. Why did he do it? Because he was afraid, that's why. Just plain afraid. Killed his courage and his confidence, everything that a man lives by. Why, well, he'll never be able to breathe again until he has guts enough to forget about Lois's money and go see her himself. That's why I've been keeping him with me all these months. So I could prove to him that happiness doesn't depend on money. Jimmy's right. I'm sorry you had to get your brains knocked out to beat some sense into my head. But you did. Thanks, Jimmy. Wait a minute. Where are you going? What do you think? Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Wait a minute, will you? I guess I'd better warn you. Maybe Lois still loves you, and maybe she doesn't. Maybe she's falling for another guy. Isn't it about time I found out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're the first one in the class to graduate. <laughs> Good luck, kid. You're on your own. Jimmy, I didn't know. Oh, shut up. You know, I wish you were a man. I wish you were Henry for a minute so I could knock your meddling brains out. Now go on. Get out of here. Leave me alone. I'll stick with him. Wouldn't have asked you to fight if I'd known about About the tin plate? That's nothing. I was lucky. You know, the guy that really got hurt when Cynthia Christ was Jimmy. He was hurt? Yeah, you see, he's got a scar that the doctors can't see. Something here, inside him. He keeps blaming himself for the crash. You mean a guilt complex? Well, I, I don't know what you'd call it. Well, Jimmy knows I'll never be able to go back to fighting again, and, well, all on account of the dent in the noggin, and as for Eddie and Ollie, well, I don't know why, but he figures he's got to look out for us guys. How long can this go on? Just as long as Jimmy needs us. If I know Jimmy, he'll stick by you boys just as long as he thinks you need him. Yeah. Oh, Mike, there must be an answer somewhere. Yep, here she is, Mr. Pettigrew. Hello, hello, my dear. I'm practically solvent. Shirley has agreed to marry me. Well, come along. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jimmy. Where is he? Where is who? What in the world have you been up to? Oh, I was playing hopscotch and dropped my bean bag. At a time like this, Shirley's at my house waiting for me, and Henry will be there any minute. I can't take any chances. This girl has to be there to grab Henry when he arrives. Well, take her and go. I won't go. Jimmy. You've been influencing this girl. I've been influencing her? Oh, I'm a desperate man, Stevens. Time is running out. And I promise you, you're going to work unless you have this girl ready, willing, and waiting for Henry. Oh, yeah? 
Well, she's going to be ready, Mr. Pettigrew. Oh, no, I won't. And she's going to be willing, Mr. Pettigrew. Well, Lenny, Because come, this Lenny. time I'm going to wrap her right around Henry's neck. Keep on going. My car's out there. Hurry, Clarence. Clarence, hurry. As long as we can get Miss Madison there before Henry arrives, we're safe. The mere sight of that Adonis might change Shirley's mind again. Adonis, huh? <laughs> what if Henry's early? Oh, there goes my sack really I could get. Oh. Let's stop the car and I'll throw him back into gear. Hold it, Mike. Why should you straighten him out? Everybody's getting something out of this but us. How can you let the poor man suffer like that? Why do you care about anyone else suffering? You're getting your Henry, aren't you? That's all you want, isn't it? Well, isn't it? You know, I've been thinking. Jimmy, you're right. What do we get out of this? Sure. Will you please stop arguing and state your terms. Okay. You set us up in business. A first-class health employee. Why, that's a, a great idea. I can handle the front, and Mike can handle the back. Sure. All right, all right, it's a deal. Now will you handle my bank? Tell us you're in business the smart way on an OPM basis. OPM? Sure, other people's money. Hey, congratulations. Here's your diplomas. You've graduated, too. Hey, Jimmy, that leaves you on your own. Yeah, what about you? On my own? Are you kidding? <laughs> hey, there's a whole world full of people waiting for my talent. All I need is a new face. Well, we're coming to your house, Mr. Pettigrew. Do you want I should carry you in and give you the full treatment? Heavens no. Fix me up out here. Shirley would never marry a, a pretzel. Come on. Jimmy, if you don't if you let uh, me... Oh, there you are. Yes, she's ready, willing, and able. It isn't that you win, you understand. It's only that I default. Oh, no. You're not giving Henry up. Oh, I know when I'm beaten. Well, come on. Where is this Henry? He should be here any minute now. And I wish you all the luck in the world with him. <laughs> You'll need it. Why, is there anything wrong with him? He's almost perfect. Almost? Well, he's so fastidious and so completely impeccable. He wants everyone around him to be exactly the same way. If a woman has an eyelash out of place, he goes into a tantrum. My nerves are completely frayed. So you're welcome to him, darling. Say thanks to the lady. Oh, after Henry, Peter will be so comfortable. Like an old bathroom. By the way, where is Peter? Peter? Oh, uh, Peter's out in the car. Yes, he's being uh, reconditioned for you. Reconditioned? Mm -hmm. Well, what an unexpected pleasure. Henry's coming up the driveway now, so pretty up, little. Jimmy, there isn't much time, and I, I want to be explained. All right, now, all right, calm down. I know, I know. You've been waiting for this moment for a long time, huh? All of my life. Uh -huh. And now that you've got the fish on the hook, you don't want to reel them in, you want to play with them for a while, huh? For a smart man, you're so, so... What was that? It's Henry. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, wait. Uh, how do I look to you? You look great. Uh, uh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Uh, are you sure? Well, now your hair is a little must. Uh, maybe I better powder up. That's right, your face is a little shiny. is a perfectionist. He's impeccable, fastidious, one hair out of place and one eyelash out of place and Henry's on his roller skates. There. That'll do it. You think so? Sure. Oh, how did I miss that? Nose is shiny. Why, 
Admiral. Well, where's Henry? I, well, I thought that he... He won't come in. Why not? Because I locked the door. Mm. 